Welcome to The Secret Diary of an Entrepreneur. You're watching Richard Ball TV. My name is Rachel Aperfords. I'm a branding, marketing, product launch expert and career advancement specialist. Today's guest we have with us is my wonderful husband and also author, life coach and business coach, Omar Zach Phillips. And we had him on our last show, which a lot of people enjoyed. So I thought I would write him again. On this show, our last show, we're talking about entrepreneurship and what it means to be an entrepreneur. And we were asking a couple of questions and giving you some skills and tips that you need as an entrepreneur. And we talked about being, what was the question we asked? Um, I don't think it was a question. I think in, in answer to the question, right. I said one of the, the skills that an entrepreneur really needs to develop are is people, people skills. Mm. So I said, okay, we need to do a video on how to develop great people skills. So here we are. Uh, so we're going to talk today about how to develop great people skills. Mm -hmm. So Omar, how does a person develop good people, people skills? skills. Mm, good question. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you are <laughs> Okay, well, it's very interesting because as we know, um, there seems to be that idea of extroverts and introverts. And the general thought is that people who are extroverts um, are better people people mm -hmm. and um, I'm here to say that's not necessarily true. I'm an extrovert and he's an introvert yeah. so we're going to go a bit deep into it. Explain to people because people uh -huh. might not know what that means mm -hmm. an introvert and an extrovert. Mm -hmm. What does that actually mean? Okay so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and give a good explanation for it really. Okay. To be honest with you um, when we talk about introvert and extrovert, we're talking about personality types to some degree. Mm -hmm. And in reality, the differences in personality types really come from the way that energy works through people's beings okay. um, and the way they express themselves and who they are at core level. Okay. And um, so extroversion and introversion really are, um, and th th there's different levels and different forms of expression within those things and you can mm -hmm. find out more about it perhaps by looking at things like um, personality types and etc etc. So things. you're talking mm -hmm. about energy flowing through one's body so what example can you give mm -hmm. how an energy flows through an introvert and how an energy flows through an extrovert on a daily mm -hmm. basis? What, what circumstances, what would happen mm -hmm. in a day let's say mm -hmm. that you would see that different energy? Yeah. Okay, so I suppose um, a extrovert person is energized by other people. Okay. So being around other people, interacting with people, um, going out, go, going out, being out and about amongst other human beings right. is actually an energizing um, factor. Whereas an introvert person um, can gain some energy from other people, but sometimes is also exasperated mm. by being around people too much or having to have long spells of interaction with other people and yeah, so they like being by themselves more they, they, they get more energy being by themselves they, can, they, they, they actually self-generate their energy right. so yeah. they're actually um yeah energized by their own Company. by their own energy that so extrovert people actually draw energy from other people mm -hmm. vampires which <laughs> <laughs> and um introvert people have their own source of energy <laughs> This sounds like an hierarchy conversation here. There's a favoritism going on here. We are talking to the audience and we're trying to explain to them about the difference. And then he's only joking. <laughs> so. Well, okay, so it kind of manifests basically in, in a different way. And oftentimes, extrovert people, you might think naturally, well, they're more people people. But actually, an extrovert person needs to de develop people skills. Because people skills mm -hmm. is different from you being just an extrovert. Uh, extrovert person. Like just being afraid of people and or yeah. ashamed to kind of just go out there and talk to people yeah. doesn't necessarily mean you have the skills to win friends and influence people. I have to say, mention my sister Faye, if you're watching, I love you to bits. We are both extrovert people, mm. but we are extrovert in a different way. Mm -hmm. My sister, I remember when she came around for Christmas, right, she had not even met my neighbours all my locality and she was just going up to them and having conversations that she's known them for 10 years and I would be like no don't, don't, don't come, come back here and I would be trying to pull her back and I was afraid not because I wasn't confident she, she 
knew what she was talking about. I was confident, but I was so afraid because I'm an extrovert, but she would go to another level and she had great people skills. That's what we're going to talk about today. She had fantastic people skill that she would make people feel comfortable next to her they would she make them feel special and you know she left and for weeks and weeks everyone was, oh where's your sister how's she doing how are the children don't ask about me they'll be asking about her because when she when they left her presence she had great people skills so that's what we're talking about because i was an introvert i mean extrovert and she was an extrovert but she had comes out comes out in a different way yeah so Carry on, sorry to interrupt. No, you. not the least. Talk about the, the fact that both extroverts and introverts mm -hmm. have areas where they're going to need to develop people, people skills, skills. and your, your extroversion or your introversion actually isn't the issue. Right. It's learning about, it's, it's in a sense, it's learning to place importance on other people and realizing that people are important. I think you read a book to me when you said leaders listen. Mm -hmm. And this leaders don't talk. I remember you read the leadership book. I think it was leaders, leaders ask good questions. Okay, leaders ask. Mm -hmm. well, that's going to be one of this. We've mm -hmm. gone a bit too far. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so the first skill to have and mm -hmm. uh, to develop great people skills, what would you think the first one would be? Listening. Mm -hmm. Listening. Listening. Learning, learning how to listen okay. to other people. Okay, yeah. so what does that involve? Okay, we know mm -hmm. we need to listen. Mm -hmm. So let's just give a scenario. Let's just say me and you mm -hmm. now in a, in a restaurant and we're having mm -hmm. a conversation. Yes. And, you know, we maybe have known each other for a while. How would you yes. how would you develop a listening skill? So mm -hmm. if we and you now started to dialogue, mm -hmm. where would be the best place? How would I know that you're listening to me, for example? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's say, oh, this coffee is really nice. I'm enjoying this meal. Mm -hmm. This is a fantastic. Oh, I love this restaurant. You know, how would I know that you're listening to me? Mm -hmm. There's an interesting question you obviously asked, how would you know? Yes. Um, and now there's two elements. I was going to say the really simple answer to how do you listen or yeah. learn to listen. Yeah. And the simple answer is, is, is kind of, the, the, is, is right there, is actually listen. Yeah. Um, you know, it's basic, but mm -hmm. it's true. Mm -hmm. um, one of the first things is to actually be interested in other people because people are important. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking to other people, mm -hmm. actually get into the practice of listening. Don't be distracted. Yes, Sit. so mm -hmm. eye contact. When they're talking to mm -hmm. you, give them eye contact. Mm -hmm. Don't be looking at another pretty girl down the street or on your phone, which I find a lot of people do, they're looking mm -hmm. on their mobile phones, you know. Mm -hmm. Even if you listen to them, they the other person needs to see by your physical your body language. by your body language that you're listening mm -hmm. to them. So yeah. yes, listen. Mm -hmm. So 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 listen mm -hmm. and then it's how does how does that other person know mm. you're listening? Is what you begin to allude yeah. to right there is by your body language, by the by the by the non-verbal cues, and also the vo verbal cues, the sounds you make. You know, mm. the, mm -hmm, mm. <laughs> the, you know the sounds that you make um, when they're saying something exciting. Oh, express express excitement. Express mm. some kind of you know change your facial expression mm. um, to fit and to meet the. Um, things that are being said um, and engage, mm. engage, mm. you know, um, put your two pence in as well, you know, come back and forth, Make, ask questions that are going to keep the conversation flowing. Yeah, mm. well we're going to go back to that mm. one, but the listening yes. one is like, don't interrupt. And very much important, yeah. do not interrupt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to do that quite a lot when he started to have conversations and oh my gosh, you know, he never used to say anything at the beginning stages, but I could see by his expression on his face like, not a good thing to do and I'm gradually now he interrupts me with me now but we've kind of balanced each other out when he before was me like interrupt interrupt all the time now i'm like i, I listen and don't rush is like, eh. i find my cue and it's kind of maturing for myself as well because you know sometimes we always be honest we all want to throw our two pens in every time someone has a conversation because you don't want to forget what's in your head mm -hmm. but maturity is that you wait you relax let that person share their dialogue and actually you will find out that you will actually remember what you're going to say mm -hmm. and you say it i mean would you would you agree yeah it's an important thing i've heard it said somewhere along the line uh -huh. that you know sometimes not to hold a question too much in your mind let the conversation flow because sometimes even before by the time that person's finished the sentence <laughs> actually a more important thing or development in the conversation has occurred um, and, the, and, and the conversation can take its natural flow mm -hmm. and be relaxed. Don't be in that state where, oh, I've got to say this, I've got to put this point in, but see where the conversation takes you. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that you will come to the end of that and have it expressed yourself. They'll have expressed themselves and it becomes a much more organic, 
holistic conversation of both parties. Because I suppose developing a great um, people skill is about interaction. You're mm -hmm. giving them something and, yeah. they're, and they're giving you something. It's like positive people, interaction. Yeah, it's still mm -hmm. that energy we're talking that's about right. being mm -hmm. an introvert and extrovert. You, yeah. You're releasing energy to, yes, to each other. That's right. So you want to kind of release good vibe the energy. Mm -hmm. You don't want to leave. When they leave your presence, it's like, oh my god, yeah, that's, that's, right, that's, that's right. one good thing to have a people school. Mm -hmm. that when people leave your presence, they're pumped up. They feel energized, they feel, they feel excited. <laughs> yeah. they feel, and, and that can come from listening, it can also come from what you inject into that conversation as well, which we'll come to okay. as we go. Mm -hmm. So, skill two what skill do you think mm -hmm. a person needs to develop to have great people skills? Ask good questions. Ask good questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would that entail? What questions do you, do you think it, it's, it matters what questions you ask? Could you say, yeah. ask good questions? What questions mm -hmm. do they need to ask? It to can depend on so many different things. So there's questions you might ask as you're going through their conversations. There, as you're listening to them, mm -hmm. there's going to be cues that they're going to throw in that's mm -hmm. going to inspire you to ask specific and good questions and develop that. Learn how to ask good questions about what that person's talking about that shows, first of all, that you've heard what they've said, that gives you an understanding of, of that and that you want to know more about what they're talking about. But also, it's good to ask questions that pertain to uh, that show a deep interest in them and in their subject matter. Right. So therefore, ask questions that help to draw them out of themselves and enable them to express themselves. Not, I'm not talking about probing or, um, what's the word, um, you know, questions that that that. How are you? <laughs> well, questions that make that person feel uncomfortable. uncomfortable. You know, like they don't, you know, that, that, that they feel as if you're intruding uh, on, on their them. personal space. Yeah. But you know, mm. it, it's obviously depend on the agenda of the conversation. Many times in business, mm. you know, you're going to be talking to people from a business perspective, mm. um, and so obviously some level of privacy because you know there is a level of you mind your own business. Exactly, I have yeah. that actually. I think mm -hmm. I mentioned to you that I had mm -hmm. a conversation with someone that I hadn't had a conversation with mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. and they were asking personal questions. Mm -hmm. It was a personal question I would like to share with people mm -hmm. that I've just met for the first time. Mm -hmm. And actually even meet them was a telephone conversation. Mm -hmm. And so you're totally right. It's yeah. like we all have our own individual personal space. Yes. And as someone trying to develop great people school, you have to understand that everyone has individual personal space. Mm -hmm. And we need to be aware of that individual personal space mm -hmm. and understand that individual personal space and not and not encroach on it mm -hmm. so it's not just the physical personal space it's the questions that That's you're right. asking in the sense of good non intrusive questions, questions yeah. but questions that that allow that person to express themselves and to express you know especially when so in business express their passion for their business express some of their ideas and their dreams and things of that nature while you give back so there's got to be that give and take you yeah. know if you're going to ask um kind of questions that are deep Give them something as well. Give, mm. give, give back and let there be that exchange of ideas and concepts and of energy. Mm. Um, you know, I think it's really, really mm. important. And one good thing as well that um, you do a lot is that you repeat. You know, mm. so if I say something, you repeat that question that I've asked you, mm -hmm. or that sentence I've said to make sure that you were clear on that. Mm -hmm. At first, it used to be irritating. Like, Why are you repeating what I've just said? Mm -hmm. But as I grew to our relationship, it's like, okay, yeah, actually, because again, it's about because we're going to talk about that and the other questions that you don't want to misunderstand mm -hmm. what that person has said yes. because that can get you into a lot of trouble mm -hmm. when it mm -hmm. comes to relationships with men understanding women. is so important <laughs> understanding is well, that's the third part okay. actually yeah. so, yes. mm -hmm. so the third skill is mm -hmm. understanding so mm -hmm. carry on mm -hmm. you said understanding is great well the thing with it like anything else you know miscommunication is a big issue <laughs> you know, know. Um, so and, 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 and it comes I suppose the way to avoid miscommunication mm -hmm. is as much as possible to seek to understand. Yeah. So when you communicate, when you're asking questions, when you're dialoguing, mm -hmm. um, seek to make yourself as clear as possible, mm -hmm. and if necessary, clarify things. Yeah. So wait a minute. You mean? This. Ah, okay. So let's explain that. And what do you mean by that exactly? Mm -hmm. So then, once you've clarified things, you know exactly what page you're on. And if that person is saying something offensive, fine, then you've got it. <laughs> but if they're, they're saying something that you could take offence from, but actually mm -hmm. didn't mean it that way, yeah. you've cleared that up before the issue even becomes an issue. I mean, that's great. Understand it. And again, you used a lot of um, the, the, the sounds, mm -hmm. mm, ah, mm -hmm. or understand. Mm -hmm. That really works as well Absolutely. when you use a lot yeah. of verbal, um, verbal nods. terms and yeah. nonsense when you are trying to develop mm -hmm. great people skills. Right. So the fourth one is authenticity, mm -hmm. being genuine. So mm -hmm. how can you develop 
authenticity mm -hmm. and genuinism in yourself mm -hmm. to um, develop great people skills? Yeah, I think it's, a, it's quite broad. It's twofold. It's authentic, being authentic to yourself and who you're bringing to the table and who, you, who you're expressing of yourself, but it's yeah. also showing genuine care and, um, and let, being authentic in the fact that you actually give a damn about that of the human being that you're talking to. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that twofold thing. Mm -hmm. um, people need to know that you actually care about them. If you don't actually care about them, then don't bother talking to them, you know what I'm saying? Um, particularly when it's talking about business and things of that nature. You know, if you're going to be with your customers, you need to show you genuinely care about them, who they are, and everything else. I mean, customers are the lifeblood of almost any business, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. So they, it's so important to genuinely care about your customer. Mm. And authenticity in that sphere is of such importance. Mm. And also being true to yourself is just of such great importance on so many levels that makes your existence mm. so much more healthy and holistic and, mm. and just makes things balanced. Because to be inauthentic, uh, to, to bring something fake to the table, it just takes so many layers of energy um, that it's just not worth getting involved in. Now I'm going to throw a mix in the works as well because when we're talking about branding, I do share with my customers is like you know, you know, like if you um, know of the music industry, they all have personas that they portray that's actually not their persona. Now the reason why they do that is because it's just like acting; you you become a character, so you can act that particular role. You know, so when you're in business, you sometimes might not be confident in yourself. You might be a very scared person, very shy person. And I say you need to take a persona of a confident person. You need to watch a confident person and see how a confident person person acts and the things that they do and take on that persona. Okay? But in still in that, you're still being authentic to yourself in the sense that you know that you're a shy person, but you know that that shyness is is stopping you having opportunities in your business. That's why you're taking on the persona of a confident person. Or for example, if you're an introvert person and you're taking the persona of an extrovert person when you go to that meeting, so you can take ownership of that meeting and you can get the results that you want. But at the bottom of it, the authenticity comes when you are knowing that this is you and you know that you're in an environment when you have to up your game. Because there's going to be certain environments where you're going to have to up your game and become um, more confident, become less shy, and all those kind mm -hmm. of things. So, but authenticity still comes in a play because you are building something that's passionate to you. You're in there to win that investment because that business is what you want. It's something that's passionate to you and you want to achieve a you know, great result in your business. So when we're talking about authenticity, we're talking about, like what Oma said, it's like developing yourself to know yourself, developing yourself to know what makes you tick, what things you like, things that you don't like, you know, what things that you want to fight for, what things that um, are passionate to you that make you excited, not to um, invest your money into a charity. That's authentic living. When you start developing and listening, we were talking about this the other day, listening to your feelings. Because sometimes we don't, haven't been taught to know our feelings, understand when we are feeling down that it could be because we are happy with someone or we are happy with something. Emotional with intelligence. That's it, emotional intelligence. I talked to the video about emotional intelligence. And you need to know your emotions because when you have emotional intelligence, that adds to your being authentic and building authentic living within yourself. So when you come into the environment of developing great people skills, you're not being fake. What I'm trying to say is that in certain environments, you're going to have to up your game. You know, you're going to have to be something that you're not. It's, it's all it's about not. developing people skills, isn't it? Yeah. So if you're an introvert person, you might have to learn how to, to come, come out, out of your shell I mean, and to, to speak to people and to be I mean. much more interactive and much more able. I mean, as, as we've discussed just now, yeah. you know, I'm an, I'm an introvert by virtue of if I was to do a personality test, um, it's going to have an eye at the beginning of my um, letters, which represents introversy. But I've learned as times past to interact with customers, to interact with bosses, to interact with all clients. different types of people, clients, you know, people of all sorts, um, and, and, and really to develop myself into a, a very much a people person, a person who cares a lot about people and knows how to express that empathy to other people, um, and also deep levels of understanding about people's minds and emotions. My introversy enables me to go deep with inside, 
understand and empathize very deeply with people and the more confident I've learned to become as well with who I am, more comfortable I've become to be in my own skin, more unafraid of who I am and what I bring to the table. Mm -hmm. um, those things have helped me to just know that I've got something to bring to the table. And that's very important, especially as an introvert person, mm -hmm. I think, to begin to learn to be confident in yourself um, and not afraid of other people. Yeah. Because you may not naturally have that kind of, you know, uh, desire to kind of just jump into every single conversation, but, you know, that genuine humanity that makes you genuinely care about other people is such great importance. Yeah. I mean, I have to respect this guy because obviously I've been on a journey with him when you know introvert and developing the skills that he, that's why I'm smiling I'm just so excited that we actually sitting here doing this video and he's talking the way he's talking it's been a journey and I just respect him so much for the journey that he's gone through and the development that he's right now I'm so looking forward to the future of what he's going to achieve and so the last question or the last tip to help you develop a great people skill is acceptance. Mm -hmm. Now that is such a beautiful word, but we re rarely understand what boundaries acceptance means. Mm -hmm. So what would you suggest um, acceptance and how to develop mm -hmm. uh, a skill of acceptance to, acceptance. to have yeah. great people skills? You know, we, we live in a world in day and age where you know political correctness and things of that kind has become a big issue mm -hmm. and that's and that's you know that's that's good and it has its place. But you know, we, we, we forget about acceptance has lots of different levels to it. You know, when you're talking to people, if people are going to be authentic, if people are going to bring who they really are to the table, mm -hmm. there's going to be factors about themselves that they're going to maybe express that perhaps, you know, don't all tie into your little box of what, you know, your, element, your idea of perfection is. Um, your ability to genuinely accept a person where they are and for who they are and not judge them um, is going to come across in so many different ways. It's going to come across in the way that you look at them, in the way you interact with them, in the next thing you say after they've just, you know, expressed their heart or shown their weakness or whatever the case may be. And also the way you shake their hands. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, first impression counts. Absolutely. So if you go into that environment and you're like, yeah, there they are. Shake my hands, kiss it. You know, then obviously you're not ex accepting them if they're not looking the way that you expected them to look. You know, a lot of people have a lot of story behind them, so acceptance plays an important part for making people feel safe mm -hmm. and feeling part of the world. You know, we've been in the realm of where we've never, you know, we've haven't been accepted so we know how it feels to be on the other side when you're not being accepted so acceptance plays an important part for developing great people skills and we're talking about great people skills as an entrepreneur mm. growing your business as you're the driving wheel so it's important that you understand um, people skills because you're going to be the one that's going to be meeting people right. introducing your business introducing mm. your brand your product whatever it is having great people skills should be at the top of your list mm. would you say absolutely it's going to be about people, whether it's your customers, whether it's your staff, whether it's your co-workers, whether it's your, um, you know, people that you need to get money from, people you need, to, who need, you need them to invest in your business, people you want to join partnership alongside, all different types of people you're going to need to learn how to interact with different types of people. It's mm. going to be massive mm. in ele any element of venture or business. It's just so important. Um, and it really does start from learning how to, I think, accept and love yourself and be confident in your own skin yeah. in, in your own skin i yeah. uh, remember and i'm just going to quote this and throw this in as the last kind of thought from myself sure. you know um reading the road less traveled by scott m peck and he says there's three things that cause a lot of people to come to a places of neurosis or you know um, to populate the, the mental homes is guilt anxiety and insecurity mm. and Say that again. guilt anxiety and insecurity. Wow. Now, when I read those statements, mm. I said to myself, you know, I don't want to populate a mental home and I don't want to be a neurotic individual. Mm. So I'm going to do everything I can to excavate from my soul, from my own personal, you know, conscious and subconscious, my own being, mm. as much guilt, anxiety, and insecurity as possible and realize that they are incumbents, they're stuff that they're baggage that so I don't need to have in my life. Why does that Mm -hmm. affect people do they coincide and what do mm -hmm. when you go through those things how does it show in your life mm -hmm. obviously we know it's a negative thing yeah. by the way you're discussing it but how does that affect people skills okay those three things the one i want to really focus on here was the area of insecurity so okay. guilt 
anxiety and security and the one I want to hit on with regards to people skills is our own areas of insecurity mm. that makes us feel insecure in ourselves and insecure in the world around us. Okay. Many of us have not been given um, a strong sense of say self-esteem mm. from our parents, our upbringing, perhaps in school we might have uh, you know, had negative experience or not felt accepted in those environments or whatever the case may be and it puts in a predicament where in this world we just feel generally insecure and that's something that we can attack or address on a personal level mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I'm encouraging all of us to look at the areas of insecurity within our lives and address it and be you know to ourselves just be honest about it I feel insecure in this way or in this realm and in this sphere when I'm around people and begin to look at and ask ourselves the reasons why is it because of anxiety around people do people make us anxious is it because of guilt you know, do we feel less than other people, etc., etc.? And whatever the case would be, realize some key things. I'm just going to throw in again that you know you're as important and as valuable as any other person on the planet. Mm -hmm. And it starts off with you simply believing that. Mm -hmm. The thing that makes you as valuable as any other person on the planet is the fact that you, in yourself, intrinsically know that to be the case. Mm -hmm. When you begin to know that, and you then begin to invest in yourself. From that perspective you see your worth and your value you begin to bring that reality to the table on a day-to-day -day basis unafraid and unashamed of other people because they're not any better or any worse than you enables you to accept people with their phobias with their limitations with their reality as well um, and it also then enables you to bring who you are to the table and say you know what i'm not going to be insecure because you know what? i've got value too i've got worth I'm important in my own right and it's not that you don't have to go kind of like um, throwing yourself out there trying to gain acceptance from other people it enables you to simply just relax and be around other people in a positive way so that the energy flows in a really in a really good sense um, and that's why I'm talking about the insecurity mm. let's deal with our insecurity so we can become stronger pe people people um, and, and we can then bring what we've got to the table Brilliant. Guys, thank you so much for watching our video, How to Develop Great People Skills. You've been listening to Richable TV. My name is Rachel April Phillips and I have guests with me, Omar Zach Phillips. We're going to try and have him more on some other videos that I do. Take care guys and have a great day and get started on building great businesses. See you guys. Bye. Ciao.